You're watching Access Minnesota. Here's Jim Dubois. And now more of our interview with University of Minnesota Professor of Child Psychology, Ann Mastin. Tell us more about the children who show resilience. How do you identify those children and what qualities make them stand out compared with their at-risk peers? Well, we have used uh, multiple strategies, and I think that's important to kind of get different angles on, this, on resilience. One strategy we've used is a very old-fashioned strategy, which is a case study, where we study one individual very intensively, and that, that method helps us get a deep understanding of some of the processes uh, and protective factors that may be involved. We've also studied just ordinary children um, the project competence study I mentioned before is a study of an ordinary group of children whose families were uh, at, in the Minneapolis Public School District and they were willing to be part of a study of, of competence and development and we measured the risks and adversities they encountered as they went along. So that we got a full range. There, there are individuals in that kind of study who had much less risk and adversity than others did. And so we could see the full range of what children experience and how they deal with it. And then the third main strategy we use is to study groups of children who are, have extremely high risk because of their experiences. And for example, we have done a lot of research over the past 20 years or so on children and parents living in emergency shelters. And those families are in crisis. They often have a tremendous load of stressful life experiences. And what we do in that situation is we study differences between children who are doing well, despite all that risk, and children who are floundering or having more difficulty. And that is a much more targeted study of in this kind of severe situation, what really matters? What, make, what makes a difference? And then we can get clues to what we might be able to do to support children who are in a more specific situation. The same kind of uh, strategy we, has been used to study war survivors, children who have co uh, come to Minnesota as refugees from war zones children who've overcome uh, disasters, natural disasters, and survived. So these are children who have very specific experiences of great adversity, and we, we just study who's doing well and how do we account for that, and how are they different from children in a, what looks like a very similar situation, but who aren't doing as well. Tell us about the term executive function and how it relates to resilience. Well, executive function is a general notion that refers to the cognitive and the neural systems that make it possible for us as human beings, and also other animals who have these kind of skills too, to control what we do. So that we, you know, we, it's kind of like um, the mental skills to control our attention, our behavior, our emotions in order to achieve our goals. And these kinds of skills turn out to be extremely important for school readiness because school requires that children are able to listen to the teacher, sit on the circle, pay attention, be quiet, follow the rules, inhibit the impulse to get up and run around the room or get in a tussle with your neighbor and so forth. So a lot of the learning um, that goes on in school requires us to be able to control, voluntarily control, our attention, our emotions, our behavior. And there's a whole set of um, brain processes that support those kind of skills, but they're also learned. And we know from research now that there are windows of opportunity for learning these skills throughout the lifespan, but some of the important windows are in early childhood when the brain is organizing itself and beginning to get up and running on these skills. It's not a coincidence that school starts when it does and that lots of preschools all over the world focus on activities that practice these kinds of skills. You know, sitting in the circle, listening to the teacher, 
a lot of childhood games in preschool practice these kinds of skills. Games like around here that children play from the olden days even, like red light, green light, um, mother may I. Those are self-control self games. Uh, Simon says they require you to pay attention or inhibit the initial habit of doing something and control your behavior. But they practice these uh, top-down control skills that facilitate learning once you get to school. Professor Ann Mastin has worked with the Minneapolis School District since the late 1980s. When Access Minnesota returns, we'll hear what she's learned from working with disadvantaged youth in the city. Access Minnesota will return after these messages.